Welcome to That Entrepreneur Life, a podcast about entrepreneurship that takes you from idea to launch and beyond. Beyond. Each week, your hosts, Andrew Lees and Clint McPherson, discuss different business topics aimed at adding value to any entrepreneur's journey. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of That Entrepreneur Life. I'm Andrew Lees, and I'm here with my co-host, Clint McPherson. What's up, brother? Not much, man. Just just excited to record another episode with you, like always, and excited <laughs> to announce our guest today. And so let's go ahead and don't waste any more time and go ahead and kick <laughs> this thing off by welcoming <laughs> Shai Lee Hikami into the show. How are you doing? Hey, good. I am so pumped to be here. I love how y'all have put this together. Your website is fabulous. The SEO, the knowledge, you, you've worked hard to organize this, this show and I'm so glad to be a part of it. <laughs> love it. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for being on Shai Lee. And, you know, maybe, uh, you could get a little more energy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> not, I'm feeling sharing it, it. not feeling it enough. Yeah, no, yeah. it's, it's no. awesome. Sending it through the airwaves love to all it. your podcast listeners. Uh, yeah, we love it. We're picking it up and I'm sure our audience will too. Nice. Yeah, it's an honor to, to have you on the show today. Um, before we get into everything, can you just kind of give us a quick overview of who you are and what you're all about? Absolutely. So I'm your social media Sherpa. I love LinkedIn. People know me from posting all sorts of tips and tricks every month on LinkedIn that can help their businesses grow. So often I hear entrepreneurs are like, you know, I don't need social media. I get my business by referral. And they say that all the time. And I'm over mm -hmm. here like, okay, as a, as a former like social media freelancer, I was like, okay, what does that mean? I mean, they don't need me. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Yeah. And it hit me a few years ago. I was like, wait a second. Social media is your business referral network. So I help mm -hmm. people who have collected good people over their years of business and help them stay in touch with those people using the tools of the web. So sometimes it starts with that social media piece. Maybe for some it's LinkedIn. It's making sure that they have a good email system going and making sure they're in a good place. So I work with people one-on-one -on -one to get their marketing in place so that they can remind all of their favorite people and their referral generators that they're there and that they're awesome at what they do. Man, That's all. That. Yep. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I mean, I know, I know how um, difficult it is to convince um, business owners, even small business owners, because my passion, I own a digital marketing agency, and my passion when I started it was to help the small business, mm -hmm. you know, succeed and realize that consistency is at the yes. forefront of what we do, right? And so, Huge. social media is a you can leverage it in a way that you know you can't with other things and business owners do not understand that. And they're like, well, I don't mm -hmm. need Facebook. I don't need Instagram. I don't need LinkedIn, oh, no. but you don't know how far and how much you can separate yourself from the competition. If you just leverage that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and you know, the other thing I would say too, is that it's not even that they like, there's a lot of magic there, but I don't think they realize they actually have the secret to social media that, the people who start from zero don't have is that if you're a business owner and you already have clients and you already have people that love you, right. that's your audience. The audience is the hardest part to build oh, and they absolutely. have it. If they put it in a place where they can keep in touch with those people, that's where like they can get even more referrals is that some people don't think of it. If they don't think of me for six months, they might not phone right. me when they actually have a problem. And that's where they Definitely. have the most opportunity that they don't use up. And I think you and I, all of us, we want to encourage yeah. that, right? I mean, that, yeah. that that will only take you so far, right? Um, it, the word of mouth or the, the referral system. Yes, that's great to have it. And that helps you get further along. And that's the greatest yeah. form of advertising. But that also goes only so far, right? So for you to have that consistent reach to build that relationship with those individuals yes. specifically that are already your clients, that are, you're already doing yes. business with you. That is the most powerful leverage because those are the ones you want reviews from. Those are the ones that are, will drive additional foot traffic through your door. Yes. And they need to understand that. Yes. Yeah. And we hear this over and over again from like every sales guru out there. It's like your easiest customer is your, your current customer or their referrals. You know, we like people do social yeah. media, like somebody's going to fall from the sky and be my million dollar client. Maybe occasionally it happens. It happened to me a few weeks ago and I was like, oh, this is great. Not a million dollar client, but it was a nice thing. But like for the most part, yeah. people aren't going to fall from the sky. It's a lot easier if you remind them that you're there and that you're awesome so that they can tell yeah. other people about you. And as a starting point, that's going to amplify that audience even further, but that's easiest place to start for sure love that yeah i mean it's uh, what's interesting about social media is that it's a mass marketing tool so it, it's a mass referral marketing tool 
but Mm -hmm. it's so personalized. You know, you can connect with, you can connect (laughs) with celebrities, you can connect with anybody. You can literally send anyone you want a direct message. It was there, you know, Oh, I've still. They might not read it, but they might <laughs> too. You know. <laughs> Can I tell you? It. They might be. They, but that's the thing is that they have more power now to reach who you want to reach now because yeah. of the internet. So mm-hmm. I, I, there's, oh, it, there's so much now. Here's the thing: like before, it used to be like you call somebody, you cold call. Maybe they pick up, maybe they don't pick up. It's excruciating. It's hard. Yeah, but it, people you know, it's hate that people. anyway. People yeah. hate that, right? And then you have like emails, right? You email a company, you're like, "Love me, give me money, yeah. I want gig." <laughs> like, like you know, that's hard. It's very hard. But now, let's say, and I'll give you this example. I was, I, I do workshops for like teenagers, especially teenage women, on teaching them how to like make their LinkedIn profiles look fabulous. And while doing this workshop, I taught them one of my favorite tricks, which is what you were just saying about you can get in touch with anybody. And I asked one of the young women and she's like, I was like, who is somebody you look up to in the world? And they were all like women in tech. And they're like, you know, 16, 17 years old. They're like, I love the CEO from House Party. You know, House Party, that app can play games yeah. and your friends. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. She's like, the CEO of House Party sounds so cool. It'd be so cool to talk to her. And I was like, okay, let's go stalk her on social media. So we looked at her LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. It was kind of whatever. We looked at her Twitter. And it, weirdly enough, she's super active on Twitter. And like, nobody's talking to her on Twitter. There's no rep- there's no comments. There's <laughs> no nothing. And I'm like, I wonder, teenage girl, if you were that one nice person that sends her replies and comments and engages with her content, don't you think she's going to love you? Don't you think if all the teenagers out there, she's going to be open to helping you one day? I think yes. And that's true for every industry. I mean, I've talked to the president of K-Swiss because of Twitter. He's like super jazzed on there. You can get in touch with so many people in a way more fun manner than your typical phone call or your typical email. LinkedIn, the same way too. It's so much easier. It's like the whole world is in your pocket now. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And which can get overwhelming too. So there's the, the, the flip side of the coin is that <laughs> seen social dilemmas. It's like, true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it can be, but the cool thing is that if you learn a little bit more about it and you get comfortable, you know, and you yes. just start yeah, from people. somewhere, then you, like you said, it's all there. The potential is absolutely Shoot. limitless and it's never been, it's never been easier to leverage something. It's never been easier to connect with people than it is now. So yes. Agreed. Yes. And, and it sounds like, are your people that like live and binge all of your stuff? Are they, they're like, they at zero. Are they like completely like they haven't marketed anything on social media or have they dove in? Cause I'm kind of curious. There's lots of thoughts that I can do to kick them in the butt to play around. No, I mean, it, I think we have it at every level, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got people starting people, you know, afraid to succeed, afraid, afraid to fail at the same time. You're like, Hey, that's Chill. a dilemma right there. You're facing like, you just got to take <laughs> action. Right. So there yeah. we have it from the from the beginning to the to the you know the very experience. So interesting. So you have the whole gamut. So here's where I put this out there. Some people ask me, they're like, you know, like, oh, I don't know, I don't want to put something out. I'm scared. I'm this. I'm that. Like, it's real. I'm even. I, I even said this on the other day to someone. I was like, I'm even sometimes scared to post stuff online, and it's me. I'm like, this is my thing. And <laughs> yeah. I know, shocking, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I say, you know what? It's like you. Go, and I always, I don't know. You're you're some dudes. I don't know. Maybe you'll relate to this. But like, when I go to the store and I want to go. Buy a dress I put the dress on I put it on I look in the mirror how does it feel do I like it I can yeah. buy it that day maybe I'll put it back on the rack maybe I'll come back tomorrow I can try it on and see what it feels like I don't have to commit to it right away you just experiment and I think with social media yeah. you can experiment without people watching you like I'm on this live streaming app now that no one's heard of before none of my friends have seen it there's a very good chance nobody I know is gonna know about it <laughs> and it's fun because I can experiment if I don't like it I don't have to tell anybody that I'm there I've done that with like Periscope I, don't, I even have a podcast I don't even advertise it but certain friends yeah. of mine have found it. I'm like, great, you guys, you love it, go for it. It's just, mm-hmm. I stop, I, I can't, like I commend you both for putting this together. It's a lot of work. But um, that's the part where I'm just like, experiment with a platform. Not None of your friends have to know you're doing it. Try it on. If you like making the content, make more. If you don't, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's when you decide to commit, like you were saying, it's that it, the consistency is what makes that magic happen. Yeah. But yeah. when you're experimenting, it's okay. Try it on, if you love it great. Keep going. If you don't love it, it's okay. Experiment somewhere else. You're going to find your spot and you're going to find where your people are. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, yeah. before we take it any further though, um, Shiley, like, can you take us? Cause I, I can tell you're very enthusiastic, <laughs> very, very excited individual, which we love, right? That's this, this, this is the easiest part when it comes, when, when somebody comes to our, on our show like this, it makes the conversation <laughs> flow and it makes it so much easier for the interview to happen. Right. And it gets us excited. So, <laughs> so with our audience listening and tuning in and you being the social media sharper that you are, are right. So yeah. can you take our audience back to when your entrepreneurial journey actually started? 
what it is about entrepreneurship that you're excited about. So wild. So this is something that only because I was looking into doing more podcasts did I realize I had like the story of how many businesses have actually been through to get to where I am today never gave credit to. So I grew up as a kid uh, of like an entrepreneur. My dad has been in business for like a hundred years. He's actually an influencer in his own right. He's got a WhatsApp <laughs> chat room that he's like super known for. Now people are paying for it. It's like, there's lots of videos on YouTube That's of me talking awesome. about it. He's cool dude. So uh, he's also, he's an influencer to connect on his network. So I grew up like watching him be in business. And I also knew like out of college that I wanted to work and do what I wanted. So like, I've been, and this has been in my soul for a long time, but here's where it really started. So I hate to say it. And I'm crazy that I'm going to admit this on the air, but when I, well, I did a bake sale in high school, fundraise for a charity. That was kind of like my first business with profit margins. But the thing that was a little bit more embarrassing is that when I turned 18, uh, the summer before going to Indiana university, I got pulled in and I hate to say it. I got pulled into an MLM, not knowing much about MLMs. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like kind of the first time I was like, I'm selling something. And I realized I stuck at this whole selling thing. And I'm like, I'm going to have a party. And like I had one person buying. I was like, Oh, I feel bad. I'm not giving you a discount. And I felt guilty. And I was this, and I was that. I was like, oh, and I was like, I'm not selling enough. And I'm like, Oh wait, I don't know what to do here. And it was just a whole big mess. <laughs> and I mean, we all know the stories about MLMs, right. but like, <laughs> it was great that I got that out of my system now. Cause now I know like, I, that's just not my thing. Like, I'm not going to touch that. But, um, it taught me a lot of things about selling. I was like, I didn't know, I didn't love my product as much as I probably should have, yeah. whatever. So that was, that happened. I learned my lesson. Some people still remember me from those days and they knew what I was selling. It was very funny. <laughs> hilarious <laughs> but it'll just be a mystery potentially uh from there i like what did i do next so i studied education in college and then from education i went to what did i do i like also did freelancing for social media so i was yeah. like doing that for a lot of nonprofits, which was super fun and then from there can i tell you how i got to the sherpa point because this for is sure. the crazy part so maybe your your audience knows but bni do you know B, does your audience know bni like do you know what bni is do you all know what it is well, maybe i should tell know. you Oh, so BNI, it's, it's like a business networking group. They have clubs like this yep. all over the world and people pay membership and essentially a group of like 10 to 25 entrepreneurs meet every single week and they remind each other what their business is. And it becomes almost like your referral network. Everyone is in a different industry. So I, they have these everywhere. You can go for like a session or two for free, which is awesome. So I went there and I said, they knew I did social media. They knew that I was like a great freelancer, but like, like you said, Clint, you wanted to help the small businesses. Small businesses aren't ready to spend 500, a thousand, $2,000 a month. If they're mm -hmm. solely on hiring someone to do their social media. So I wasn't the best fit in that way. But then one lady was like, Shiley, I get it. You know, social media. I just don't know if I can hire you to do my social media, but can I just sit down with you? And can I just pay you to teach me social media? And I was like, wait a second. I, I was sort of light bulb, right? Exactly. Light bulb. I'm a certified teacher. I love motivating people. I love working with people one-on-one. -on -one. I was like, yeah wait a second, is this, this is what I should be doing. And so we did a few sessions and yeah. she loved it and she was doing her own Instagram anyway. And now she's doing it better. So one thing led to another and I've been teaching social media ever since. I just finished teaching a class at the University of Chicago. I've been at various oh, universities cool. doing workshops. I work with lots of people one-on-one. -on -one. Even one of your podcast guests is a client of mine. It happens. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, it's, it's a lot of fun. That's how I got to where I am today and it always evolves and grows, but I, I got to give credit to where I started. So I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's an awesome but, story. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, I think I think a lot of us have probably had some experiences with um, with MLMs, maybe uh, not bake sales, sure. but lemonade <laughs> stands. You know, selling. We've oh, had oh man, yeah, a couple guests who we actually had two guests who sold uh, golf balls that they got out of the pond. What? In yeah. oh yeah, they they that? lived near yeah, they, they lived on golf them. courses. Yeah. yeah, they would they would jump into the into the pond or just rake them out, you know, and then wow. sell them back to golfers. Like, yeah. so <laughs> I mean, there's some creative ways to make money, especially as a kid out there. Um, so that's cool that you were, yeah, but, yeah. It's cool that you were involved. So yeah. Early. Yeah. But in the that's MLM so game, in the MLM game, you brought up a good point. I mean, you're like, you realize that you just, that wasn't your cup of tea, right? Like that no. wasn't, you maybe didn't believe in it as much as you should. So if, if you're going into yeah. multi-level marketing, which there's nothing against that, guys, because I, I stay away from it. I've dabbled in it. <laughs> but you have to believe in the product. And you have mm -hmm. and not just you, but you have to Living take it great. from a standpoint is like, is everybody else going to believe in this? Like if, if is it an easy sale? There's some things that are out there in the MLM game that, you know, people love and they'll they, they'll eat up. But is it something you're going to be excited to have to push on a daily basis or get mm -hmm. people signed up under you and all this other uh, garbage? It's like, hey, yeah. Yeah. It's, not, it's not for me. Not it's for, for me birds. either. But <laughs> yeah. you learn, you live, you live and you learn, exactly. right? 
We all start somewhere. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad I did it, but now I'm like, you know, it's not for me. Like, I do not want to be your underline or whatever, but you know, <laughs> anyway, there's, there's a lot of people who, anyway, there's a lot of stuff for them. Like, I need you, Charlie. Episode. You're going to make me platinum. I need you. Make you platinum. <laughs> oh my, there's, ugh, it's, it's insane. But anyway, but you know what? Been there, done that. That company actually, I think didn't, doesn't even exist anymore. So, gotcha. you know, it's like, you know, it was, it was a good decision to get away. So <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, so, so yeah, you, you kind of talked about, how you started out, what, what got you into entrepreneurship and, um, and then, you know, figuring out that social media was really, you know, something that oh. you could teach, which is, yeah. which is great. Cause I'm sure you've, I'm sure you've figured out the, you know, the profit margin on info products is pretty high. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's always a good one if you can, you know, um, but did you get, how did you get proficient with social media? You know, was it, was it through personal use and then you got really good at it with personal use or was it, um, did you need to use social media for a business? And, and like, that's how you really learned it and Ooh. figured out how to, how to, you know, hone your skills for social media. These are juicy questions. Make sure I hit on all these. Cause you're every sure. single thing you asked was <laughs> like fire. And I'm sure every listener is like, Oh my gosh, how the heck does lady get <laughs> So I'm going to tell you a little bit more of the backstory. So it wasn't a business, but back on MySpace, I was a leader MySpace. on MySpace, right? I'm the okay. MySpace leader. I had my, I had a community that I had cultivated. We, uh, I don't know how many, do you want to know my weird hobby? I can tell you now. You yeah, go ahead. Sure. Let draw it yeah. So I love the shows, Big Brother and Survivor. Like I love them so much. And so I was in the fan pages for those shows on MySpace and I loved it. And I found within those communities, there were nerds that played online versions of these shows on MySpace space and i was like no, i'm kidding. really competitive i know like, i'm in <laughs> oh my gosh it's crazy people do it in real life now but that's oh there's like that's a, there's an ignite talk on youtube about my the, how this hobby has taken 10 new levels but anyway back to the story <laughs> here uh so there's people who played online versions of these games and uh they were promoting in the fan pages and they were kind of spammy and they weren't not most of the fans didn't really care so i was like why don't we just have our own myspace group so i did i created this hub and i brought all these people together and it was really magical so i learned a lot there not really realizing it was social media. I don't think the word social media was like a big word back then. I mean, I was like 14 or whatever, like, yeah. but that's yeah. what I was doing. I featured people. I, I managed the community. I engaged people. I made rules. I try to protect people from not getting hurt by each other. Like I learned a lot there. So that's one piece of it. The other piece of why I got so good at social media, and this is all kind of related to this MySpace thing is that uh, it is a little bit of my, my like deep little struggle story here of like, I was a kid that didn't have friends. I was bullied. I was teased. I don't think I had real friends till high school. And my real best friends came as a result of that online MySpace community. So for me, it was the inter being so internet connected mm -hmm. and how it changed my life to make me have friends that I like knew that that was my tool to, to facilitate friendships. It was a tool that I loved. And That's I realized cool. over time that those exact skills are what my clients call me for is that they have relationships, but they don't know how to connect that world with their internet world, which is something that I had to learn out of necessity and out of survival yeah. so okay. yeah. yeah so that's how i got to where i am now is that using those social skills that i had to learn to make friends and really it translated into doing it for business uh and i i just you know the internet changed my life so <laughs> now i'm helping other people use the internet to change their lives that's, that's awesome powerful. and i'm yeah, I'm sure when when you started with MySpace, you weren't and you were connecting with people and making friends on on <laughs> MySpace, you probably yeah. weren't thinking that you'd be able to, you know, turn it into a business. I'm 100%. sure you were like right, you know, no but, idea. but that's <laughs> but that is amazing how you can, you know, you get comfortable with something, you get good at it. You, if you're one step ahead of somebody else, you can teach that thing to somebody else. Like, know, I've heard that before, you know, yeah. you do one more day's worth of research than somebody else did. You can teach that day's worth of research then, you know, because yeah. you, you are then more of an expert than somebody else. So, True. so it's cool. You know, many a days of research, I will tell you. Many, uh, yeah. many, many of <laughs> exactly. accounts managed, many of organizations, <laughs> many even doing my own. Like there's a, so many different places I've had to execute that I've like picked up all the some tips and tricks that can help a lot of people that will never find this information otherwise. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, and it's very powerful. Again, look how you learn how to leverage and harness the power of at the time you said, you know, social media wasn't a big word, but no. leveraging the power of social media to to create those friendships that you were lacking you know in, in physical form right outside of social media but then getting that engaged it gave you a sense of empowerment right 
And yes. I think that right there huge. is awesome. And it, and it's huge how you leverage that to get to where you are today. Um, yes. and, and not let a roadblock or a hurdle slow you down from, you know, engaging with people and making those friends that, you know, maybe you lacked beforehand, but now I highly doubt that's the case today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Many friends in many places. I'm very grateful. There you go. Uh, that's but it's, awesome. you know, but it's good. But social media is how I keep in touch with them. And social media is how I relate to them is that I don't need to be on the phone with every single one of my friends or prospects for that matter exactly. to stay in touch with them is that I can post something and they can see and know that I'm still around. And, and that ties cool. it directly into the question that like, I want to ask you now, Please. because we know you've mentioned it already on the show and we know you really like LinkedIn for networking, right? Oh. You just mentioned B&I oh, groups, right. which we have several mm-hmm. down in Wake Forest where we, where, where we live at, but how are you using LinkedIn for business development to drive targeted leads to your businesses? Oh, so this is great. So LinkedIn, I love it. I love it because even like today, I get to look both of you up and I see, oh, we have mutual connection. That's one easy hack. If you're yeah. at a networking event virtual or one day in real life, it's a great yeah. way to see how what, what like what you have in common. That reputation makes a huge difference. That's one piece of the puzzle. Second piece of the puzzle is whenever I meet somebody at an event, and I go to a lot of virtual networking events now, I always write a message saying where I've met them, how we've connected and all that stuff. Cause you never know where they're going to pop up like two years on the line. I'm like, where did I meet that person? What did we talk about? Why do I, what, 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 who are they? And I write it in the message, which is a fun little hack. I do this with Facebook. I do it with a lot of platforms just so I know where I met the person and what conversation we had. So that's one thing. I always engage with someone to write a very nice message after meeting someone at an event. Then the second, the next thing comes up is that that person that I met at an event who maybe is curious about my business, but is not ready to you know buy anything, which is right. usually takes a few interactions before they buy. They now are, sure a person in my network that they're there's a good chance because especially not a lot of people are posting on LinkedIn that they're going to see my content. So now every month when I post, they will be reminded that I'm someone that they met and they will be educated in whatever tip I'm sharing that month. So over time, somebody who I met a networking event two years ago could eventually become my client. And better yet, if it's a a past client of mine, if they're already connected on LinkedIn, which if you're not connected to all your past clients on LinkedIn, do it, they will see the content that I put out on a regular basis. Sometimes I'll even talk about them on my podcast, on my, uh, not podcast, but on, well, actually sometimes I talk about my clients on podcasts. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but that's, yeah. So uh, that's a big piece of it is that getting your eyeballs that are in your target demo to see your content. And a lot of the people that I work with, they're connectors, they're networkers, they've, they're going out there, they're going to the events, they're going to message people who are their people, but you got to get them to a place where they're going to see your content, which is great for email marketing. When you can get people off social, put them in your email. Amazing. But that's, that's the piece there. You're matching the eyeballs to the content that they don't even know they need yet. That's coming from you. Yeah. So LinkedIn's good for that. <laughs> yeah. And do you think that LinkedIn is, are, are, is your content getting more eyeballs per post than maybe Instagram or Facebook, you know, cause mm-hmm. a lot of platforms are, are kind of restricted, right? Like they're, they it, maybe in the beginning, the yeah, that all the algorithms messing everything up. So, you know how, or the algorithms are helping things too, right? But like, you know, it's kind of, you just don't, whatever it's doing, you don't have any control over it. So do you True. think that your content is is getting um, shared to, to your whole audience or do, does it feel like maybe it's being limited a little bit? So here's the thing, any platform that's fun and exciting, at some point it's going to lose organic reach. People are going to be pissed. But yeah. like mm-hmm. one thing that will stay forever, well, if you can get them on an email list and that, that'll protect you a little bit, mm-hmm. but they will always change. But what will be forever and always is the relationships that you create. And I always use this example of my dad. My dad has 200 paying members in his chat room right now. Did he know 40 years ago that all of his best contacts were going to be in his chat room? No, but he had the relationships. And when that platform came up, he was able to match that to his community and what they were already mm. using and so that's, that's what amazing, I, yeah yeah it is amazing and and so that's a piece of the puzzle there but the same time too is like a lot of people don't post like the algorithms love great stuff the algorithms love when people tell you that they love their stuff i think one of the simplest things that people don't do and it can apply to all these platforms and it can help you with the algorithms is actually personally sending a message to invite them to like your page or yeah. thanking them for liking your uh, Instagram post, or oh hey yeah. thanks for viewing my Twitter story, the new Twitter story fleets or whatever they're called. Yeah, that yeah. little thank you is going to force them to look at your profile 
profile one more time, yep. it not only feels good as a human being, but it also tells the algorithm that they're interested in you. So right. that's that's the hack there is that it's 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 the relationships that matter more than anything. And mm-hmm. no matter what the algorithm does, if you're thanking people, it'll make a huge difference. Uh, yep. And I know that like, I'll give you this example, right? There's a mentor lady that I kind of helped on a project like four years ago. And she's a big deal. She knows everybody in Chicago. She's awesome. And uh, I saw her like on another post where somebody was talking about me and she's never liked anything on my my posts on Facebook or I'm sorry, LinkedIn. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and so I messaged her to say, thank you. And she's like, Shiley, I have questions for you. And I'm like, I've had no phone calls with you in three years. You have questions for me. I wonder, I wonder where that came from. I wonder what I alluded yeah. for you. And it was the information that I put out that she didn't know she needed that made her want to ask me more questions so that's something to keep in mind there yeah, i love I mean, that the, yeah that's the power that's how you leverage the power of relationships right Huge. like you don't know that one word of encouragement that one thank you that one whatever that, <laughs> yeah. that 10 minutes of conversation the hour of conversation whatever it is planting that mm-hmm. seed and also showing people that you care and that you are Huge. human and you're not a robot and, yes. and you are staying active and posting stuff like on LinkedIn and for that person to like it just randomly out of the blue and for you to notice that. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. well, and now it got you back and it comes full circle and it really yeah. paid huge dividends to engage, huge. re-engage that client. Huge. Absolutely. Absolutely huge. Yeah. It's it's the bumping into the grocery store feature. It's like sure. well, you love when you bump into people in the grocery store and then you get to say, oh, I, you know, I was just thinking about you and they never called, yeah. but it's like now you're there. <laughs> what were you going to say, Andrew? I saw you jumping in. No, no, no. Yeah, I was just going to say that, um, you, you know, it's it feels sometimes like it feels a lot of times like work to to engage with, you know, all these yeah. people and and to to go out of your way. I mean, one one really good tactic, especially with with Instagram, but you could use the same thing with LinkedIn um, is interacting with other people's posts, right? You know, commenting, like you said, like you were talking about earlier with that woman's um, Twitter account. Yeah. And she was, she wasn't getting a lot of love. And, no. you know, if, if you, <laughs> if you get in there and, you know, comment and, and interact with other people in a genuine way, that's definitely part of it too, is like, you know, if you're doing it in a genuine way, first of all, that will everything is better, you know, from that, from there. Um, yes. The algorithms will naturally pick up on that. Uh, people will respond better to it. And then it's going to feel less like work. Uh, I've definitely, that's something I struggle with because social media to me is like, uh, it's a, such a love hate relationship. <laughs> Lay it on. Um, Let it out. You're not the only one. There's plenty of people yeah. who hate social media. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. What is and it? it's like, yeah. so, you know, it's, it's so sometimes I'm like, Oh man, this is such a cool thing. And and in general, it's, it is a cool way to connect with people. I get it. And then sometimes I'm like, man, this is some of, there's some, I, like, I don't understand why people are posting this stuff, you know, like it doesn't make any sense. I don't, who, why do they think anybody cares? Um, <laughs> they post but, crap. Yeah. But you know what, to, to be fair, um, some, even if one person cares, you know, even yeah. if they're connecting with one person, you know, it, it pulls in groups of people who, right. you know, share your interests and that's so cool. And if you don't like it, you don't have to be a part of it. So, oh. um, so it, it, it's, it's definitely a very, it's definitely a very interesting way to connect with people, but it's, it's so powerful that it's, it's hard, it's impossible to ignore if you have a business, True. you know, you're going to need to get into something, even if it's YouTube, you know, even if it's like not the most personal interactive platform, it's like, you gotta, you gotta do something to get your product and your service and your personality out there. Okay. Yes. There's a lot of good stuff in here. I know a lot of people are going to relate to exactly what you said in terms of like, okay, it drives me crazy or, oh, I should, I need to go put myself out there. There's a lot of that pressure. And there's Mm -hmm. like, well, maybe I should get on YouTube. Maybe I should have a podcast. Maybe I should have this. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of people who just do it willy nilly. They're like, I'm going to throw stuff everywhere and pray that something will fall from the sky. And it's, yeah. it's hard. And I think part of why people hate social media is because they don't know the fruit that are going to fall from it. And they don't know, they don't have a strategy that's actually going to mm-hmm. bear them fruit. So I want to ask this question to both of you, if you don't mind, how are you engaging your referral networks now? How are you engaging your past and current clients to make sure that they keep loving on you and learning from you and remembering that you're the geniuses that you are? Well, you got to stay engaged, right? Like, again, you, you one, like you said, whenever you finish and follow up with a client or you finish a project, 
staying engaged or thanking them for their time and then yeah. posting content and, and from time to time tagging them and saying, Hey, thought about you, whatever it is. Um, but yeah. I know after our conversation, this is relevant for, to what we we're talking about, right? Found this cool article, shoot it over yeah. to them just to stay on top, on top of their mind, Absolutely. right? Just don't let it just sit there and, and them just disappear. Because again, if yeah. they don't, they don't see that you appreciate, it's not even really appreciating them or not, or not but you know, they still maybe want to have that contact point with you, but they don't know how to ask. They don't know how to proceed with that. And so it comes down to you and me, like being social media experts or whatever, to stay engaged <laughs> yeah. and throwing, throwing our name in the hat, throwing our name in the ring and not letting their sense of complacency be our sense of complacency, right? Oh, absolutely. And I love that you said that, right? That you have a system of, you know, that you're going to stay in touch with them. You're going to send them something. You're going to send them a hello. Some people do the holiday cards. Yes. Right. And you've got, I'm sure, Andrew, you've got something like that too. Like we know that that's a thing. And and this is one of those tools that helps us stay in touch. That is something yeah. that is feasible. And I know we can't always be on the phone with all of our past clients. Everyone's busy, but there are ways to do it. And so social media is one of those ingredients of how you can do it. And social media, to the, maybe to email marketing marketing, right? So I love it. Andrew, what about you? How do you stay in touch with your people? Because I'm sure lots of listeners are going to be curious. This is, this is yeah. what they should know. Yeah, exactly. Well, so I have uh, two, two, biz- two main businesses. One is <laughs> good for you. Kind of, kind of a, yeah, um, kind of keeps me on my toes. But so the one, the one business is a consulting business. It's um, product development and, uh, and business or product launch strategy. So, uh, so right now I'm actually, I'm working on getting more content out there because with that business, I have for the most part over the last few years been running it with that, you know, old school outreach, you know, uh, that that's my main method of marketing and it, and it works really well. You know, I, I network with, I network with people like, um, intellectual property attorneys and manufacturers who I can say, Hey, you know, I'd love to refer you, you guys business because I have clients who need manufacturing I have clients who are trying to file a patent. And if you get anybody who comes your way, who, who isn't ready for you yet, but they need product development, if you, if you could send them my way, that would be great. Mm-hmm. And so that works really well. Um, but, but in order, but it's tough to scale that up without using social media. So I've definitely, I'm, I'm getting into that more and more and, you know, I'm figuring out how to leverage my, my LinkedIn network. Yeah. Um, it all starts, I think a lot of it starts with content, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's really where, where I'm putting a lot of my effort right now is creating content that I can share with people. Yeah. And then once, because then I can, then I have a real reason to connect with people to say, Hey, check this out. I made this little video about doing market research. What do you think? Um, you know, it just is a really great excuse for people to connect. And then I think it's an easy way to scale up. And then you mentioned turning those as soon as you can turning your, um, turning your audience into email subscribers, because that's the only thing we've talked about this on the show before, but that's the only thing you control, right? Is your email list. It, you you know, you can use the, the platform you use, you know, if it's, um, uh, active campaign, Yay, or, active campaign. Or, or, yeah, or whatever it is, right? If active campaign goes out of business tomorrow, doesn't matter for you. You just find another, you know, email, um, client. And, mm-hmm. but if you're, you know, if, if everything, if all of your business is derived from, um, from social media or other platforms, you don't have any control over that. You know, True. if you have, um, you got 300 million followers on, on Instagram, that's great. But if you haven't converted them into email subscribers or any of them, then you, yeah, it could all just disappear. Oh, or Facebook, yeah, yeah, or Instagram you're... pulls the plug. Boom. Uh, exactly. Like, yep. oh, it's <laughs> happened. There's my audience. Where'd it go? I, my Periscope <laughs> yeah, yeah. audience. I had a great Periscope audience. Periscope ain't so popular anymore. So yeah, yeah exactly. I, I read an article. I don't know how true this is. What, what, you know, it, if this is true or not, but with Joe Rogan, um, (laughs) he sold, he sold his, you know, he sold the rights to, or he signed a hundred million dollar contract with Spotify, you know, to host his podcast. Right. But which is a lot of money. It's an enormous amount of money. (laughs) Um, but I, I read something where if he had 
a, a solid email list, he could have sold it. For, he maybe could have sold Some it for more. a billion. Yeah. So like, and maybe not a billion, but Ooh. more, he would have been worth more if he had more control over his audience, more control. Not, it sounds, that sounds bad. That sounds <laughs> manipulative, but you know what I mean? Direct like ties. Had direct ties. Yeah. With email. So, um, so I thought that was interesting. You know, oh, what I you said about it. get, getting that audience off, off social and onto your, onto your email list, but interacting with them on, on social is, is so powerful. So yes. Yes. Andrew, you know, I, I love everything that you said. I think so many people are going to hear this and be like, yes, I relate. And I want to commend you on doing that whole outreach going out there. That is something that I'm going to be real. It's, it's a hard thing. Like I, that has not been my play. I don't have the drive that you do to go out and do it, <laughs> but you have the thing that's already so hard to do is that you have, you know who you're looking for, you know who you're right. hunting for. And if you've added them to your list, they're ready mm -hmm. to see you and what you have to do. So can I give you a hack that maybe you don't have to use it, but your audience might appreciate this because they might not even have content out yet. Can I give you a thing? We love hacks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, please. It, it's some people are like, I don't even know what to post. And like, you know, a social media freelancer who doesn't, is not given direction from the business owner to what their audience is looking for. Like they will just post pretty things that are related and people will see your name. That's the basic level of social media. But what uh, a yeah. business where you're trying to serve people, right? What they need to see from your content is, and I like to use the idea like, what are your top 10 questions that you get all the time? Like, what is your FAQ? Mm -hmm. Whether it be for you, Andrew, or anybody who's listening to this, if your top 10 questions are not easily infused into your content, your website, maybe video clips, whatever it is, you're missing on a chance for your audience when they look you up to get that information before they get on the phone with you is that they have to give you that chance to get on the phone with you to have that conversation via LinkedIn messages. So now your content is now educating them and training them on the things that they were wondering about that they never had the answer to long before they ever give you the chance to get on the phone so mm -hmm. always thinking that. yeah what are your faqs and, and can you tell your clients their problems before they even realize they have them yeah definitely and I, I hear similar you know similar questions over and over again from different clients and i keep thinking and i really have to put this into a video yeah. um a blog I really have a to post get yeah there. yeah yep no podcast. that's that's <laughs> yeah podcast exactly yeah be a so lot of different is, ways <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this is a great, with that entrepreneur life, it's a, it's a great way to, you know, get some information, some questions answered, um, for people. And it's just one more, one more touch point. So yeah, yeah exactly. but that's, that's great advice. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. That's, I get that all the time. What do I post? That's what you post. <laughs> exactly. Your, your that, clients <laughs> tell you all the time what they want to see. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Just kind of think about, think about that and reverse engineer from there. Exactly. So Shiley, when somebody asks you where to get started with social media, what do you tell them? And you kind of, you touched on that just a little bit right yeah. there, but like in general, when somebody just asks that basic question, what do you say? Oof. So maybe this, I would say there's a lot of ways. I like, I always love the experimenting. The second thing is like, it's like, I also want to ask them this question. It's a relationship thing. It's like, where are your people? That's one big part of it. But also too, what are you not going to hate doing? Because if you're solo, you don't want to hate it. And I hate that, like, it's true, but people hate doing their own social media because they feel yeah. like it's obligated. They don't know what they're doing. And it's like another task. And there are a thousand, you know, entrepreneurs, we have a million things to do all the time. We are the accountant. We are the salesperson. We are the marketer. We are the, we're the, you know, we're the service provider. We are a hundred of the things. Mm -hmm. And so like, you have to find something that you like doing. So for me, actually, it's funny. I hate writing but LinkedIn writing has been really good for me. But like, I'm, I, I don't know if you can tell, but I love the talking and the personality thing. So discovering that I was like, wait, I, you know, I almost love this doing, then, you know, I love being hired to do speaking engagements, but sometimes uh, if I contribute to speaking engagement, like, like, you know, it's a, it takes a lot. And here I get to have a conversation. Yeah. And for me, yeah. that is strong for me. I know that I love live streaming, that I can facilitate a great conversation when people are in there. So I know that that's where my strength is. So LinkedIn Live, I am waiting for you to freaking let me have it because I have been prepared for this for like <laughs> doing more than a decade of live streaming. I'm like, give it to me. Uh, <laughs> But like find the thing that you're good at and what, what platform favors that skills. If you like editing short videos, tick, oh, I'm obsessed with TikTok, but it takes me a little bit, a lot of effort to like edit some of these videos. And I'm like, yeah. Ugh. But, yeah. like but like find the thing you're good at and find out where you might like it. If you like photography, maybe Instagram's a good spot for you. You know, if you like writing media might be great. If you want to answer mm -hmm. questions for people, uh, Quora, or if you want to know what your audience is asking, go to Quora and you can see what other people are asking about that may be relevant to your business or industry. I actually bought, it's funny, I love matcha. Have you all had matcha? 
uh-uh. like green tea powder. Oh, yeah. God, so good. Yeah. Um, so basically, I love this product. It gives you energy. It's almost like drunk without the drunk, like, but it's caffeine. <laughs> it's great. And you don't crash. It's delicious. And so I wanted to go buy matcha. I was out. And so I was like, where do I go to find affordable matcha, but it's good quality? And I was going for the fancy one. I used to work at Jamba Juice and it was very expensive and I didn't know where to find that matcha. So I posted on Quora. I'm like, I'm looking for matcha that's affordable, but like is going to give me really great lattes. And one lady from my matcha life, I'm going to shout her out. She replied to me and she's like, oh, you know, you need it to be Japanese because of the, you know, the, the, all the other ones, they like, they like cut it with like bad powders that you don't, they're not really matcha. You want good quality. You want this. So I ended up buying one of her products and I was like, great. Now I have matcha that is a high quality grade because she replied to my question when I had it. And I was like, great, why not? So cool. So anyway, you got to find what you like and where your skills are at and play with, start from there. That might be an easy place yeah. to begin. And if anything, bring your audience there if you can. Like I always say, like whenever you want someone to, to like your page, connect with you, ask them personally. Don't just send them a, I hate this with Facebook. Please like my page. I'm like, I don't know what your page is about. You have no information on there. I'm like, why should yeah, I give yeah. a dang? But if you right. message me and said, hey, I'm doing this thing. Can you support me? I've seen this. I have a client that I told her to do this with every person she added on Facebook. I had two clients are at the same time. This drove me insane. I told them both exactly what they need to do with Facebook. One listened and one didn't. The one that listened and didn't just willy-nilly add 300 people to the one that listened and added people one by one is getting seven, eight, nine, ten 10 likes per post out of 60 people who follow, which is actually pretty darn good for Facebook. That is, yeah, yeah. So like, and she's got another guy is, is posting stuff that is not related to his audience. He like kind of willy nilly <laughs> added everyone and the Facebook algorithms think that this page is stupid. So they don't post it and they don't share stuff out. So yeah. like it shows how much the, the, the people know that you care matters. So mm-hmm. a huge difference there. And uh, yeah, there was, it's just, it's awesome. So anyway, I could talk about this all day. You know me. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. It's cool to have that that side by side comparison. Yeah. You know, show what you know <laughs> what your what your tip for somebody actually helped. It helped one person who took your advice and, it, yeah. and the person who didn't take your advice, they they didn't get very far. Oh. So that's pretty interesting to see. But yeah. But yeah, that's I think that I I agree. I think that's um that's really the, probably the most important thing is is just to figure out what what you like, you know, and that, and that's based on your personality, what you've done, you know, in the past, like what, what you're good at. Uh, if you like, if you like talking, you know, you could be <laughs> on a podcast, you know, uh, yeah. you know, you can do video. If you like writing, there's plenty of opportunity for that. Um, sure. so there's, there's so many different opportunities, but I, but I think a lot of people, I think the mistake people make is they're like, all right, I'm going to be on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And I'm also going to do LinkedIn and YouTube and this and that. And like, yeah. eventually, That's hard. eventually, if you have, yeah, if you have a yeah. team, but yes, if I you mean, have a team, yeah, even with fo- a team, it's a your lot. Focus, <laughs> yeah, your focus yeah. gets diverted and you can't yes. truly oh, yeah. engage with the core audience that you're trying to reach, you know, like exactly. again, again, you're going to have a different audience on LinkedIn than you do on Facebook. Obviously it seems like, a lot of people are getting angry now because people are leveraging LinkedIn like it is Facebook. And everybody's like, this is like Facebook <laughs> crap. This is like, stop. <laughs> this is yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah. So leave the Facebook stuff off here. <laughs> yeah. And it's just funny because, again, it, people don't know how to use it correctly to an extent. But like you said, uh, you, you have to look and know what your business is. And so if it if it's picture heavy on things like, you know, coffee or you oh, know, yeah, uh, flowers book. or whatever it is, you know, mm-hmm. if you're, if it's apparel, obviously Instagram is going to be huge for you because huge. You, can, yep. you can take pictures and show all that stuff off. And, and that's, that's awesome, you know, but like if you're, if your business, if you're trying to get clients that are like a B2B, I mean, why wouldn't you try to leverage LinkedIn, right? Like those are you other business people. Like it's like, they're not they're on here. To just, buy. Exactly. They're just yeah. not on here just to be on here, right? They're business minded individuals that have either cash. business, they have cash, whatever it is, they're there and you have to engage and, and you have to know if that's your audience or not, you know? So insane. Yeah. It's insane. LinkedIn is insane. They said, what is it? I don't know what the stat was, but there was like some like 60 or 80% of millionaires or something like that are on LinkedIn. It was some crazy stat. And I was like, I would believe it. The average salary yeah. of people on LinkedIn is like, 
I think it's the average salary on other platforms is somewhere around like thirty or forty thousand a year. LinkedIn, right. it's like seventy. So there's yeah. also mm-hmm. like a very sophisticated crowd on there. But like you said, the fashion people, like Instagram's probably going to be a good spot for you. So maybe you don't have a choice in that matter. Yeah. But there's ways to use your superpowers on there too. Yeah. I will say, yes, you don't want to be on a million platforms. You're going to stretch yourself thin. But there is a way to translate the same concept and same content into different things that will feed into other platforms, yes, which is yep. a little bit more doable with the same idea. This reformatted for what the platforms are looking for that's always important the other Mm -hmm. thing i will say about being on a lot of platforms there is one advantage so i told i always tell my clients like if anything i call it like a a showcase page on every platform so you could put a linkedin job uh, business page but now those don't give you an attraction but just having the page someone's going to look at your linkedin they're going to look at your career they're going to look there uh so if you tell them hey follow us on our personal pages great you can direct them to where you actually want them to go check out my website you can tell them where you want to go so with her one of my clients I told her, you know what? I don't want you to get too tied up into Instagram right now, but I want you to make one because you never know when, and this goes for Twitter too. You never know when someone's going to want to tag you in their post. So especially if you Mm. get any sort of press, they might look to say, Oh, I want to tag this, this woman's company, but if they can't find you, there's no credit there. And the people on Twitter are not going to know where to go next. If they want to learn about your company, you just lost some attention. So Mm. I told her to get an Instagram, huge point, right? I get her. She gets an Instagram within a week. Uh, I guess it pinged all her Facebook people to tell her that she had an Instagram. She put like one little post there to give them some sort of direction to go to her other pages, just as a starting point. And then a a organization tagged her in an event that she's going to be speaking at on Instagram. And she would have never gotten that tag if she she hadn't had that account ready to go. Exactly. Does she need to post every darn day? No. I might have her put something easy on there that's low effort for her, if anything. But like, but having it means that they can now find you and at least you can direct them somewhere. Oh, for sure. And and you, it's point, very man. important. I mean, me, I have a social, you know, a digital marketing agency. So a lot grabbing social media real estate, even if you don't leverage it or use it oh, at yeah. the time, Huge. is very important, right? For backlinks, for everything else, though, that, oh, that too. And, you, and what you just said, so people can tag you because you don't know <laughs> that your person that, you know, wants to shout you out just uses Twitter. And hey, I don't have a Twitter account. They can't tag me or they, they want to shout me yep. out and they just put my name, but nobody's going to really be able to find me because I don't have it. Right. And so that is why it's very important. Even if you don't leverage anything at that time, you're like, I don't need a Twitter account. I don't need Instagram because I don't use it. Yes. You know, go ahead and get it. And, and, and if you don't even mm-hmm. want to create it, have somebody create it for you. Yeah. So it is there with your information, the important key details that you want people to know. So when they do want to shout you out or when they do come across or when they do do a photo op or whatever it is, they can shout you out and give you the credit that credit is due. Right. And that's amen to that. I do not want people to miss out on that. And our listeners to think that, hey, just because I don't use this, just because I don't use Cora, just because I don't use A, B, C, Parlor, or whatever else is coming up on the <laughs> coming up on the, yeah. you know, on the me wees and all that other stuff that's sh- coming around the corner, the WhatsApps. Just get an account, create something, and just have it there so somebody can reach out to you or shout you out if they want to. Yes, and I'm going to yes and that because everything you said is such fire. Uh, the, a yes and to this. The other part of making the account, whether you're, you're sure if you're going to use it or not, is that you get an advantage. Is that I was on TikTok four years ago when it was called Musical.ly. Uh, and I, you know, I didn't think much of it. I made some lip syncing videos. It's awful. I took some of them off, <laughs> but, uh, but like now, like two, three years later, every of one of my like connections or friends from other platforms, whenever they sign up for a new account, they will always get recommendations from people they know. Right. So they'll see, Oh, your friend Shiley is on this account already. You should follow your friend Shiley. So that when I decided to care about that platform, I get the first to platform advantage. I already had 200 followers. Yeah. Same with like Instagram. Am I Instagram crazy? I posted like 13 times on Instagram, but I already have 700 followers because I was on there before any of my Facebook friends were. And every time they connected to their Facebook, they will get, Oh, your friend Shiley is already on here. Same with Cora is that every person, that came after me is already following me my friend posts on Cora like a hundred times a day and I have more <laughs> followers than he does because my people saw me on their first as their first connection so keep that in mind you might garner names and likes from people that down the line you might care for same with emails like even if you don't have an email that's going out every week if you're not capturing them you never know later down the line you might want to use it yeah. so first the platform yep. <laughs> and and you secure that you know that handle yes so exactly. Exactly. somebody else could scoop it up and, you know, and you're, it could, <laughs> it could also help you if you're looking for, uh, for, for the name of your business, you know, you're trying to figure out what that, what that is. You might, 
that might help drive your decision, right? Yeah. If you're, if it's already taken on, if the domain's not taken, like the URL, but it's, it's taken on Instagram and that's like the platform that you really want to so dig don't into. Don't go there, Andrew. Don't go <laughs> there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a sore spot, a sore spot here, I <laughs> Don't <see>. go there. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it happens for everybody, even at that entrepreneur life. <laughs> exactly. Oh, at man. that entrepreneur oh, life. You, you yeah, see that? Yeah. It's like that entrepreneur life US, USA or something like that. I'm like, come on, man. Like, man, it's like, so we're, close. We got it everywhere else. It's like, but we couldn't get it on Instagram. Come on. Well, if you get a trademark, you might be able to, to force them yeah, to give it up. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That mm -hmm. depends on what you want to do. Great. Yeah, yeah, I have a client fine. that's dealing with this now. Somebody, somebody took her names on a bunch of stuff, and I'm like, she has a trademark. So I know a lawyer who does social media law. So I'm like, I know she could probably hack that out. So oh, anyway, yeah. so we need, we, yeah. we need, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want that name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, 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 Shiley, through your entrepreneurial journey, let's just keep this thing going because yeah. it's a good conversation. Love so, from it. your entrepreneurial journey, the highs and lows that we all experience as entrepreneurs. <laughs> What has yeah. been the most difficult thing for you to date about being an entrepreneur? Oof, I don't, I, I never, I don't think I've shared this, but like, uh, there was an embarrassing point in my business where there was an extended period of time where I was being hired for various things, but not one of them was social media. And I knew everything about social media that there like that I knew that so many people needed to know. And it was heartbreaking. And it made me feel like maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe something's wrong. And you know, when, when this, when it shifted to Sherpa, it was like a light bulb. I was like, Oh my gosh, you know, I suffered all of this thinking maybe I wasn't good enough. And I'm like, I know what I have is important, but just, to, to mm -hmm. not like sometimes with that idea of like, if I'm not getting paid for something that maybe I'm not good enough, or if I don't always have a client. And mm -hmm. I heard this, I was on a call yesterday where this woman was like, you know, I'm, I've been getting referrals for a long time and it's been a little bit dry. And she felt like she had to be hard on herself because she didn't always have clients coming in. And you know, that we hear about this like feast and famine, especially for contractors, freelancers, consultants, like it's a real thing. And it's like not letting go of tying that my self-worth and my skills and my abilities are not tied to like my booming months versus my not booming months. And I think that, that kind of hurt a little bit and it was really scary for a few months where I was like using credit cards and it was great this is a while a long time ago but like mm -hmm. that was really hard I'd say that's scary also too like not knowing where to go for help is that I know what it's like to run a business you both know how to run a business but like the people in my life my friends have no idea how to run a business dating someone a few years ago uh like he thought like what I was doing was oh she's got a cute little business oh I might and I hated that he said this uh and so I like urge men don't do this to your partners if you date women um but like he was like you know oh I, like he treated me like he's gonna have to support me one day and like that I wasn't mm. capable of anything and it really hurt and, and yeah. just, he was trying to give me business advice when he is, himself has never run a business before yeah. it was really painful hearing a friend of mine when I was playing with like a website platform and I was selling a service online through a website she's like oh she likes, I hate this literally. She didn't think twice when she said this, but it hurt me so bad. She's like, Oh, you know, I can, you know, maybe I'll decide to do that one of these weekends and I'll start a little business thing. And I was like, you don't know how much like, I yeah. suffer just to get this far. Right. Like, I'm not, I'm not a bajillionaire. I don't have all that stuff and it does okay. But like that broke my heart that she thought that this was something that she can just do overnight. And it's, it's like yeah. someone like y'all know this, like it takes a lot. It takes everything. Sure. It is, it is in your head all the time. It is like a baby. I don't know if it's really like a baby. I don't have kids. So I'm sorry, parents, if I've offended yeah. you here. Well, I never like, carried one. I do have a few though. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but like, it's, it's, it's something you have to nourish. And, and I, I like, I would say that a lot mm -hmm. of people don't understand that. And so I, I, now I feel like I have entrepreneurs that I can talk to who understand, but I think that was something that's hard is that you're lonely. Who do I ask for help for? How do I yeah. build this? And it's so, it's such a blessing that this show exists because you're doing that for so many people who might not have that outlet. So I commend you both for making these resources available to them. Thank you. Yeah, no, we appreciate it. And that's exactly right. That's the, the whole idea of this show is to connect entrepreneurs and, um, make people understand that it, it's, or, you know, help people to understand that, uh, you know, even if you are doing it, even if you are in business by yourself, you're not alone. And there's, mm, there's so many people yes. out there who are, who are doing the same thing you're doing with the same struggles. Um, and who, but you know, who are, who are, who have down times, but they also have, you know, really good times. Like, um, it can be, and you can have both and you're going to have both. Right. I mean, you hear a lot of stories of people who only seem like they've only ever been successful. Right. And then you hear <laughs> stories of people who, yeah. There's and a you, struggle. You, oh, always a hundred percent. And, uh, and then you hear stories of people who it seems like they, they kind of just totally failed at, at 
at business, but, um, you, you, you're going to have both, you know, and Mm -hmm. as long as you stick with it and you're persistent, um, and you have a network who can, who can kind of help you out with actually two things I think is we talked about this offline a little bit. I think it's important for people to have inspiration and, and talk, be able to talk through things, you know, with, with other entrepreneurs, um, just to have support. And, and then there's also like, also people need like, um, you know, let's say I'm launching a product and I want to figure out how to put it on Amazon. I want to talk to somebody who knows, who knows that, who knows everything about, exactly. you know, creating a product listing on Amazon. And so there's actionable, actual actionable things that people want to know about. And so that's, that's the other part of the equation, you know? So, uh, but yeah, that, that's awesome. It, it's, it's good to be honest and it's good to show that it's, it is a, it is a struggle and, uh, but it's also, it's also fun. It's not actually that bad, you know, like we, it, like sure. everything has, <laughs> you know, even if you're working for somebody there, that's a struggle too. Like every, yeah working in general is a struggle, right? There's, <laughs> yeah. It's like there's no getting around that. Right. Entrepreneurship is awesome, but it is not easy. No. That's the thing. It's like straight exactly. up. That, I mean, everybody has to understand you jump in, take that leap of faith. It's not just going to happen because you decided to do it. Like that fill the dreams thing, you build it, they'll come. That's nonsense. You know, that's a movie. Yep, yep. Obviously, yeah, <laughs> they, built, they built the field and they came, right? But at the end of the day, that's not how it works. So it's yep. like you have to build up a and thousand continue, fields. Exactly. And continue to work <laughs> and continue to grind and continue to embrace the struggles, the highs and the lows, because that's what we just asked you about, right? Like what was your high through the highs and lows? That's what you have. It's like a roller coaster sometimes. But you try to make that roller coaster not so up and down as much as possible and you try to go up, right? That's the fun mm-hmm. part to me. I hate roller coasters. The fun it part to me fun. is like it's like <laughs> tick, 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 you know, you're going off. I'm like, okay, this is dope. But outside yeah. of that, everything else is not going to be fun to me. I'm like, <laughs> you know, you go straight down, your stomach's still back there. I don't like any of that, right? But it's like, it's the, the ride up is fun. The journey. It's, it's the journey, mm-hmm. right? The ride up, the journey going up the mountain. But it's like the, going down, you just have to embrace it. And just like, I'm here now, What you know, it is what it is. And just know that things get better. And like for me, when a roller coaster stops, things got better, right? Like <laughs> after I stopped feeling like I feel after the ride, but in my stomach finally catches up with me. But at, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's one of those things. It's like, you just got to embrace it. Love, love the journey. And that's why you do it. And I think that's what gets me out of bed every morning is like, I know Definitely. there's an opportunity to succeed. There's an opportunity to be better. And just because something happened wrong yesterday or I lost a client or oh, yeah. I gained a client, whatever it is, I just know that you just got to have the mentality that I'm going to kill it today and leave mm. it at that. Right. Yes, Absolutely. Man. Oh, yeah, I love man. It. Yeah. It's, uh, that's, that's the thing where sometimes we think, ah, you know, I'll, I'll be happy. I'll enjoy things when I get to my destination, but we're never really at our destination. Right. Like, you know, if, if, uh, if all of a sudden my business was, was doing a million dollars a month next, you know, next month, I'd be very, very excited, but (laughs) you know, there's, I would celebrate for sure. But, but then I'd also be like, all right, well, what else can I do? How can I, you know, how can I, like yeah, exactly. Let's go you bigger. Know, let's ten x this. Let's hunt. You know <laughs> how <laughs> how do we how That's do we great. go bigger? And you know, but at the same, but no matter where you are in your journey, it's so important to have fun and uh, you know just make the most of it every day. So. Yes. Love what you got. Like, what is it? Do what I love. Love what I do. That's what I need yeah, for, podcast for exactly the reasons you both just shared. Exactly. You gotta love it. I gotta love it. And I, I, you know what? I am grateful that I'm happy and look, there's ups and downs and there's always so much more to do and it never ends. But like, I'm, I love that I'm happy. I have plenty of friends who are unhappy doing what they do. And I, I'm grateful that I wake up every day. Like exactly. getting to support people and doing things that I care about. And I, I, it sounds like it's, it, you, you all connect to it's worth, worth the challenge. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. When you have passion about something, it's, it's going to show and, and you're going to be successful eventually. So just stick with it. Yeah. Well, Shiley, as we wrap up this episode, if you could leave our audience with one piece of advice, what would that be? So I actually, this is great. I have a social media quote that I love to share and I would wish I had written it myself. Social media is about the people, not about your business. 
provide for the people and the people will provide for you. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. I mean, put, putting, putting out good value for people will, will come back to you. And it goes back to the content that you put up on social media and, you know, everywhere else um, that you put out there into the world. If that's helpful content, then the business will come back, back to you. And, and uh, even when it seems like, oh man, I don't, I don't know, it, it, this, like I'm, I'm making a YouTube video and it's taking forever and I'm not sure if anybody's going to gonna like it. And if it's even, I'm making no money on this right now, right. it could come back in a huge way. So yeah, I love what you just said. Yes, to all of that. I think that's a perfect way to end this episode, guys. And I think that's a wrap. And from the yes, both sir. of us, Shiley, we want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to bring energy and help us add value to what we're trying to do on our podcast. Absolutely. I'm so grateful to be here. Uh, yeah. Can I connect? Uh, I don't know. Can I guide your users to connect with me on LinkedIn or beyond? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So I am all over the social media. As you can see, all of my experiments at Hakimian45. You'll see my name in the show notes. Uh, you, and I'm at your social media Sherpa.com where you like, I'm going to tell you this. We've talked LinkedIn a little bit here, but your profile is almost like a oh, second website. So your website is going to shape how your leads are going to see you. So I put really cool mm -hmm. examples of other people's profiles on my page. So you can sign up and see like, I don't know, like 20 examples in there. Really cool LinkedIn profile so that you can really showcase yourself well for the next lead that comes on to your your page. Awesome. Yeah, that, that's super helpful to have for people to have examples and, and to know where to find you. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, well, it's been awesome to have you on the show, Shiley. Guys, <laughs> thank you so much for listening to That Entrepreneur Life. To learn more about what Shiley is working on, check out Shiley Hakam Hakamian. <laughs> it's okay. That. I just put Shiley Hakimian. No, you're good. It's Sh good. Shiley Hakimian. Yeah. Uh, dot com forward slash podcast. I'm going to spell that out. We're also going to have that, you know, a link to it, but S H A I L Y H A K I M I A N dot com yes. forward slash podcast. Mm. That way yeah. get it, get it there. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Easier, easier for people to type that way. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> They're going to see that's my personal website, you know, my business website, you got every nice. social media platform out there. So I'm there. Yeah, connects to everything. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And if so, you know, if you like what you heard today, everyone make sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or any other major podcast directory. You can also find us on all of our socials and on our website at thatentrepreneurlife.com. And with that said, we also want to quickly give a special shout out to our family and friends, include all of our listeners, followers, and subscribers. Thanks for continuing to support what we do as entrepreneurs. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode of That Entrepreneur Life. Thanks for listening to That Entrepreneur Life Podcast. Be sure to visit thatentrepreneurlife.com to join the conversation, access our show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode as we continue to add value. Until next time.